I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a video on spectroscopy. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgo Man products and the author of the Dot Destroyer book. I want to go over a really nice problem that I think you're going to enjoy on NMR-IR combination where I give you some information and you're going to deduce and propose a structure. You got to remember on the dot exam, you can get a question like this and it's multiple choice. So the answers will be there and it's easy to work it backwards. But come along and let me show you how I will do it in a slightly harder format where there's not multiple choice. I give you a C10H12O and I'm going to ask you to and do the analysis and then propose me a structure. Now, in the analysis, it says here that the IR gave a signal at 1710, and I give you a whole bunch of NMR data. Notice that there's a 2.2 ppm triplet, and it says two H's. So that means that two H's gives that signal. We often give not only the multiplicity of the signal, but we tell you the number of H's. Notice at 2.3, there's a multiplet, two H's again. There's a singlet, three H's give a singlet at 2.4. Boy, they're really close together. And then I give you um, two doublets at around seven-ish, at seven, two, and seven, three. And then there's a triplet at 9.5 ppms. The first thing that I should do on the data exam is why don't we take the degree of unsaturation in this molecule? So I'm gonna write C10, H12, you don't count the O. I showed how to do this in another video, so if you got a question on how to do the degree of unsaturation, check that video out. So I go underneath it and write the nearest alkane of C10. You double it and add two, that will give me 22, subtract the difference in H's and half it, and that gives me five degrees of unsaturation. That means that this molecule might have five rings, it could have five double bonds, etc. Because each degree of unsaturation um, counts one for a ring and counts one for a double bond. Double bond gives one degree, in other words, a, a, um, a ring gives one degree, a triple bond gives two degrees. So five is a very big number, there could be a lot of things there. Now. Let's go over the data. The IR, first of all, is 1710. And that means it would suggest the presence of a carbonyl group. So we know, I would think pretty much for sure that there's a carbonyl group here based on the 1710 number. Now we go to the NMR data. Now the first thing that catches my eye is this 9.5. 9.5 is a number for an aldehyde group. And that's very important because 9.5 suggests an aldehyde group. And notice the aldehyde group, that would confirm my carbonyl, and it says it's a triplet. So that would mean that that aldehyde group is gonna be next to a CH2 group. Hopefully everybody can see that that this would be, you jump to your next door carbon and you see there's two H's and add one, that would be a triplet. All right, so the next thing that catches my eye is the seven two and seven three. When I see anything around seven, that's gonna suggest a benzene ring. Now, whenever you see a doublet and a doublet, two doublets at around seven, that's gonna suggest a 1,4 di substituted benzene ring. Well, if there's a benzene ring present, that would, a benzene ring, as you guys know, looks like this. So that means that there's a ring and three double bonds, there's four degrees, and then there's a carbonyl. That would confirm the five degrees of unsaturation. The next thing I know is I see there's a three hydrogen singlet. Three hydrogen singlet tells me that there is a CH3 group. And then I love when I see CH2 um, or two H's because two H's means there's a CH2 group. And then there's another CH2 group because it says two H's again. So basically, I would probably steal a peek at the answers. Now, I'm gonna propose a structure and let's analyze it together. If I propose this, Let's 
let's just look at this. Now, let's pretend that this is choice A and the dad. First thing, I would go to here, and this would be very downfield, and this one hydrogen would give a triplet, and that's confirmed. Well, how about we go to this one? This two H's, well, it's next door to two here, so that would be a triplet, and it's next door to one, so it would be a triplet of doublets, or we would just call this a multiplet. So there's the multiplet, and then this two H's would be next to one, that would give me my triplet, so that worked. This CH3 would surely give a singlet, and notice they're all around the twos, and then the 2H doublet, there's two H's here, and two H's here, so this and this, well, take your pick if you want to do top or bottom, they're equivalent. If you do this one, it's next door to this, so this is a doublet. And then if you look at this, this is split by this into a doublet. So that would confirm that this would be the structure. So I'll take this away just to make it look a little prettier. And therefore, this molecule would be the correct answer. On the dad, it would be a piece of cake. Always go to the signal that's the most downfield. And the minute you would have saw this, you would have said, oh, it's an aldehyde. It's around nine-ish. Nine-ish would have gave a triplet. And you could probably knock out almost all the choices. All right, I'm going to show you how you build this compound. Um, if this, was on a, if this was on an exam, this would be regarded as a question that I would probably knock out 95% of the class. The question is, how would I make that compound, say I started with toluene? Well, I'm going to show you a really clever move. There's other ways to do it, but there's a lot of long ways to do it, and we always want to do a reaction in the shortest amount of steps. I'm going to show you a real clever way to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called the Corey House Reaction where I'm gonna bring this species in as the dialkyl lithium cuprate. And when I do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ortho and para, and I'm going to only use the para isomer, so I would separate that by crystallization. And as you can see, I'm gonna attach the CH2, CH2, CH double bond, CH2 on. And boy, now watch this magical move I'm gonna make. This is clever. I'm gonna take ozone, zinc, and acid. What that's gonna do, it's gonna break the bond, and then whoosh, it gives me my aldehyde, and then my byproduct, which we can care less about, would be the formaldehyde. But as you can see, I did it in two shots. Boy, this would have been a hard problem um, if you try to do it any other way. But at any rate, I hope you can see. So if I did this reaction in lab, in real life, and I think that I got the problem right, and I'm like, whoa, 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 I think I made it. What I would then do is then subject it to analysis with an IR and then an NMR, and as you, can, as you saw before, I would look at that data and see if it matches up and correlates to my structure. I hope this gives you a good idea of how we use spectroscopy in the real world to identify the structure of an organic compound that we created. These are easy structures. In real life, I don't even think you want to see what the other graphs look like of, say, steroids or anything like that. They're crazily um, difficult. But if you understood that, I think you're good enough for the DAT exam. All right, guys, I hope this helps, and I hope you're enjoying my study group. And if you got any questions, hit me up. All right, bye-bye.